The 6.5 is on the road at AMD's Advancing AI event, and it has been an energetic one. I mean, people were talking about this event in the run-up for, quite frankly, months because of this insatiable appetite uh, for AI, and that's, uh, that's on the, in the data center, and that's on the edge, and, and everything in between. Dan, it's, it's been a great day. It has. It's been the year. Really, we're going on, what, about a year and seven or eight days since right. uh, AI revolutionized <laughs> our entire world. And, and the funny thing is, there are companies that have been doing it a lot longer than that. And you and I have been covering it for a lot yeah. longer than that. But the truth is, is that the market always does tend to drive that demand. And it's been a bit of a halo for the year. Markets have been tough, but for companies yeah. that are in the AI space, they've had a bit of a reprieve. And there's so much energy, Pat. And this was a day not only was everyone else excited about, but I'll be, I'll be honest, I was really excited about. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we're pleased to announce uh, Lisa Sue here back for the 6.5 again. Lisa, we really appreciate you coming on the show multiple times as we've chronicled your journey that quite frankly uh, has, has been awesome. Hey, and thank yeah, you so thank much. You. Thanks, Pat. Thanks, Dan. It's, um, it's, it's great to be here with you guys always. And thanks for spending the day with us. It's Absolutely. been an exciting day. Yeah. Well, thanks for keeping the pace too. Um, you know, you came out really energetic. You flew through because I know you had a big list. You had partners, you had announcements, you had things. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But, uh, you know, Pat and I, we're, we also do like to think about the broader market, what's going on in the industry as a whole. You, I'd love to get your take, though. Um, I heard you say something like, this is the fastest you've ever seen it accelerate or fastest yeah. you've ever seen transformation. So maybe start there and just kind of how you're overall seeing the market and seeing the opportunity and what's going on with AI. Yeah, you know, I, I think um, this is such an amazing moment. I mean, if you think about, uh, and, and you said it, you know, it's been about a year since ChatGPT came out. Um, I think it just changed the way we think about technology, right? It's it's so easy to use. The idea that you can ask your computer, you know, what you should be doing on a trip um, next week. That's, you know, I think this um, has really um, opened up people's imaginations. And so when we look at the market today, um, you know, a year ago, we thought uh, in 2027, you know, the market for data center AI accelerators would be 150 billion. And frankly, that seemed like a really large number. Uh, and I've spent, you know, the last 12 months talking um, extensively to our customers, our partners, the ecosystem. And what we're seeing now is, um, you know, I think the market's much, much larger. Um, you know, we talked about a $400 billion TAM in uh, 2027. And, uh, you know, even that seems humongous. But uh, we also see that there's so much demand out there for you know, more AI. So yeah, it, it's a pretty exciting market. I think um, the technology is changing quickly. The applications are getting better uh, very, very quickly. And uh, you know, we're trying to drive widespread AI adoption. Yeah, so Lisa, you made a ton of announcements today. I want to start uh, with, a, with one that I think was the most anticipated that everybody wanted to know more about. And that was the uh, MI300X. And, um, some of the things that, that surprised me, first of all, uh, was training and inference, okay? Knew you were coming in with great numbers in performance and inference, and you showed training. And I really appreciated that. And it really, I think, opened up the aperture for people to see uh, the AMD opportunity uh, right now. And then there was the progress in the software with Rockham 6, and then the cadre of partners that's the grand purifier, right? Is your customers, <laughs> right? I mean, it's, you know, we always like to say there's the analyst take, uh, there's the tech company take, and then there's the customer take. And I saw a lot of support today for that. Can you give us the highlights? Maybe even um, how's it differentiated uh, yeah. for one else? Yeah, so uh, it's been a huge day for us. Um, you know, I'm so proud of the team. Uh, you know, it's really been uh, you know many years in the making uh, to come up with um, MI300X. It's um, an amazing product, uh, 153 billion transistors. It has um, all of the latest generation everything. Uh, it's you know uh, 12 chips in a, in triplets between five and six nanometer. Uh, you know, two and a half D, three D packaging, high bandwidth memory, all of these things. But most importantly, it runs workloads really well. So uh, you know, we've talked about inference and how important inference is. Um, but yes, we did show some training results today as well because look, it's the complete package, right? So it's the right product at the right time uh, for um, you know, what is this gen AI you know, world. So yeah, it's, it's, it's been um, a lot of fun today. So on the other end though, hardware is sort of 
the rage of the, the market? Who's got the GPU or is everything going to be an ASIC? And, and, and there's a lot of back and forth in those conversations. Of course, we're seeing homegrown silicon from, from the hyperscalers, Lisa. But one of the things that probably needs to be spoken about more that you're very focused on is the software side. Yeah. The market is thirsting for this competitive hardware offering. But for that to really work, it's all about how do you make the transition as seamless as possible? How do you, you guys speak to the term, I think you keep saying, you know, higher levels of, of, of abstraction of software. And as you see these more open source tools, and it seems with what you're doing with Rockham, you, you're really focused on making it easy for people to choose your hardware, but also to really open up all the quality of engineers, the big, bigger ecosystem to deliver on the promise of AI. Talk about the vision around software, because I think that may be part of the AMD story. Uh, it needs to be told even more often. Yeah, no, you're, you're absolutely right. So great hardware has to be enabled by software. Um, I think our thought process with Rockham is, look, we're not just trying to create another software environment. Um, there, there are proprietary software environments out there. They're very, very good. They're very capable. Um, but actually, we thought about with Rockham, yes, we want um, the software to be very, very uh, capable, but we also want to innovate together with our partners on this you know, open um, ecosystem. Now, what's different today about AI and sort of innovation in AI is um, actually the, the, the latest generation um, uh, software developers actually want to develop on these higher level frameworks. And it's not because they like AMD or, or anyone else. It's because they want to operate as fast as possible. Like, who wants to tune to hardware? I mean, that's hard. That takes, like, you know, man years, you know, of, of investment. Whereas if you write at the higher levels, um, you can actually innovate much faster. And so that's what we've been really focused on. Um, you know, things like PyTorch, right? Uh, you know, the PyTorch um, capability. And, and, you know, what we've done is we have... Um, basically optimizations on a nightly basis to the, to the PyTorch framework so that if you're running on PyTorch, you know, AMD is going to run out of the box. Uh, we've had a lot of opportunities to work with some of the large hyperscalers as well. You know, Microsoft was here today, Meta, um, Oracle, and you know, we've also learned a lot about how to optimize to make it easier for them to adopt. So you're absolutely right. Software is super important. And um, you know, I think today we can say for sure with Rock'em 6, we're absolutely ready uh, for um, the software environment that um, AI developers need. Yeah. So Lisa, we've talked uh, macro environment, uh, went into data center, uh, talk a little bit about the software support. And by the way, you know the sixth generation of Rockham I've chronicled since the beginning. And what I heard today, the inflection point for me as an analyst uh, was th this is a this is a turning point uh, for 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 the company because you have brought to bear uh, a lot of competitive hardware in the space. And, uh, but based on what the partners are saying, uh, the software uh, as well. I mean, I heard a lot of messages from Meta, right? One of the biggest software developers on the planet and, and talked about that being the biggest deployment, the fastest deployment that they have, the work that the, the two of you did on PyTorch and talked about the performance uh, benchmarking and improvements uh, for Rockham 6. So uh, for me, the, it was a turning point, uh, which I think is pretty cool. The one thing we haven't talked about it yet, and I alluded to a little bit in the run-up, is your strategy is really end-to-end -end AI. Okay, it's from the data center, uh, it's the client device, and, and everything in between. Can you talk a little bit about what did you announce today? And I also saw you flash a roadmap up there about the future, and maybe talk about the multiple phases uh, of the, we'll call it the AI PC. Yeah, no, for sure, Pat. So, um, you know, I, th I think you summarized it well. You know, in the data center, for us, it's been about we have great hardware. Let's make sure the software is ready. That's Rockham 6. And, you know, frankly, I also want to uh, you know, point out we, we've made sure the platform is ready. So it's not just about, you know, yes. one GPU. It's about what can we do to get, um, you know, multiple GPUs and, and, frankly, thousands of GPUs up and running. And we've, we've been really been able to put that whole, um, you know, capability uh, together. Um, but as you said, you know, like as much as I love the cloud and I love the data center and enterprise, um, you know, I believe AI is going to be everywhere. And, and the key is um, how do we get um, the right technology in each form factor? So, yes, you know, we, uh, we started with Microsoft, um, Kevin Scott at the beginning of the day, and then we had uh, Pavan Davaluri at the end of the day talk about sort of the Windows and client ecosystem. I'm excited about AI PCs. I'm excited about 
you know, sort of this idea that you know, the you know, PC can become truly the personal productivity engine that we all have our own data that we want to be able to um, leverage, uh, but we also want to leverage you know, all of the models in the cloud. So we talked about the importance of NPUs and Ryzen AI. Uh, we've already shipped millions of processors with Ryzen AI today. Um, we're now shipping our next generation Ryzen 8040. And yes, we previewed um, our next next generation, yeah. uh, which is uh, you know, called Strix Point, uh, which will have the next generation NPU. And um, Pat, this is really just the beginning. I mean, I, I view you know, sort of the, um, the AI PC very much as um, a continuum of what we can do when we get um, the true technology uh, in, um, in the hands of lots of developers, uh, we'll be able to unlock you know, productivity that we haven't imagined uh, before. So um, you know, lots of stuff going on in AI. I think it's been you know, just a, a, a wonderful opportunity for us to put it all together for people. So as we wrap up, and, and there's a lot of ground to cover, you know, a couple of things I really loved uh, that you talked about. Any, anytime you go into the economics, at least I thought you did a really nice job of kind of talking about that, especially in the data center, you know, less less servers, less GPUs, better economics, because this is very expensive. And so getting there is very expensive. And then obviously the killer workload is, is it's inference. And so consuming it, you want to make it as, you know, democratize it as much as possible. And then you do it from cloud all the way to the edge. But the interesting thing is we kind of started talking about how fast it's gone. And I think it's going to get faster. And I would just kind of love to get your take on that because what we saw in the last 12 months, you know, are we going to see turns like that in six months? Have you, have you thought about it? Because that puts an immense amount of uh, pressure, but also a huge opportunity for you. How do you keep up the pace of innovation with the demand that AI has created? Well, uh, I actually view it as just a huge opportunity. And, you know, what we see is um, the opportunity multiplies when you bring partners together. And, you know, that's, um, you know, hopefully we got um, that across. I mean, as much as you know, we love our technology and, and the product capabilities that we have, um, we actually believe the way you accelerate the pace of innovation is that you co-innovate, um, that we work really closely with um, our largest customers, our um, you know, most important ecosystem partners, so that we can you know, bring that innovation together. That, that's what we're doing. You know, in the past, kind of people did things serially. With AI, there's none of that. I mean, this is the fastest moving technology that I've ever seen. I actually do agree with you that it is um, going to accelerate in pace. And I think that um, actually plays well for those who have a complete portfolio. They're, they're, that's the, the piece that I love about it, is I, I can see the synergy between what's important in the data center and what's important um, in the client and, and edge. And, um, and then we see all the embedded capabilities as well. Yeah, silly. Oh, I was just gonna say, it's kind of, there's kind of a tech joke in there, Pat, but about parallel computing. You know, like you're saying how it, it's, it's serial versus parallel. And all right, you, know, you got that. I didn't get that one, that? but yes, yeah, yes, I got that. that. Good. Yes. I mean, it's technology improving the next generation technology. So at least it's been a big day. I mean, we've, we've covered the gambit. I mean, there's never enough time. But would like to ask you if you had any parting thoughts uh, as as we start to wrap up this interview and this day. Well, um, I would say that there's one key theme, and that is, you know, AI is the most important technology, um, you know, really of the last 50 years, and you know, certainly the next um, many years. Uh, you know, AI is our number one priority at um, AMD. I mean, we've made um, a ton of progress. Uh, we love the uh, partnerships that we have. Uh, you know, we love the fact that the ecosystem is really coming together, and uh, we intend to, you know, accelerate the rate and pace of AI in the industry. Love it. Lisa, thanks so much for joining us here on the 6.5. Super, thank you. All right, everyone, we're here at the Advancing AI event at, for AMD in beautiful San Jose, California. It's been a big day for AI. It's been a big day for the industry, and we hope that you have learned a lot here with Patrick and myself. Hit that subscribe button. Join us for all the episodes here. Well, we got to say goodbye. Okay. See you later.